Hi students, now we are going to understand a concept which is extremely important for the learning of thermodynamics that is a specific heat capacity. So this is denoted by small s, the symbol is small s, not capital S. Now it is a very very simple concept. For that I am going to consider the simplest example. Now, you consider these two bodies, solids let us say. So, the first solid is having a mass of 2 kg. And the second body I am going to consider 20 kg. So, let us say that the body A is having a mass of 2 kg and the body B is having a mass of 20 kg. You tell me which is heavier? Naturally, B is heavier than A. Okay. Now, let them have an initial temperature. Both are having the same initial temperature. How much I have taken? 25 degree Celsius. Okay. Now, I am going to heat both the substances. I am going to supply some heat. So, that the temperature increases. Okay. Both the body A also increases its temperature from 25 to 30 degree Celsius. And body B also has to be increased from 25 to 30 degree Celsius. You can take so many examples. In two stoves, you just heat the water. Okay, 2 kg water in one stove, 20 kilogram of water in another stove. And you have to produce the same hotness, rise in temperature in both means. You tell me. Will they acquire the same quantity of heat or a different quantity of heat? Obviously, the smaller mass will consume less heat and the larger mass will consume more heat or not. You ask your mother, she will say correct answer. Because the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature will be the same amount. Understand? So, both the bodies, the rise in temperature is how much? 25 to 30. So, what is the rise in temperature is 5 degrees Celsius. But do they have the same mass? No, they have different mass. So, the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of a greater mass must definitely be greater. If you supply same quantity of heat for two different masses, then the rise in temperature cannot be same. So, it is very clear that the quantity of heat supplied to the system. So, delta Q is directly proportional to the mass of the system. Do you agree with me now? Okay. So, simple example I told you. In the first case, we have found that the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of two different masses cannot be the same. Because the rise in temperature is the same. Therefore, it is directly proportional to the mass. Now, another set of example I am going to consider. C here, another set. So, here, one body is C, another body is D. What about their masses I have considered, you see? Do they have the same mass? What is the mass of each body? 2 kg. C also is having 2 kg. D also is having 2 kg. Okay. Now what I am going to do is, I am going to increase the temperature from 25 degrees Celsius to 30 for the first body. And the second body, I want to increase the temperature from 25 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. Yes, now you tell me what is the rise in temperature in the body C now. 25 to 30 is how much? 30 minus 25 is? 5 degrees Celsius. And what is the second body D now? The rise in temperature is 40 minus 25 is how much? 15 degrees Celsius. Though the masses are same, though the masses of the two bodies are same, but uh, the rise in temperature is not the same. So, naturally, you tell me which of the two bodies C and D should have consumed more heat. Yes, you are right. That is the body D. Though they are having same mass, since the rise in temperature in the second body is greater, it should have consumed more heat. So, now we 
come to understand that the quantity of heat supplied to any system also is directly proportional to what uh, the rise in temperature okay the change in temperature or the rise in temperature this is denoted as what a delta t when i express the temperature in capital d i mean capital t you must uh, definitely know that the temperature's unit is uh, kelvin so the temperature uh, capital t is called absolute scale of temperature only kelvin you have to express the temperature so my dear students from these two, I come to know that uh, the quantity of heat supplied delta Q is proportional to the mass of the substance uh, into the rise in temperature. Understand? So, the quantity of heat supplied to any system is directly proportional to its mass and also it, it is directly proportional to the difference in the temperature or rise in the temperature. Now, I want to change this into an equation. Therefore, I am going to convert this into an equation by multiplying by a proportionality constant. So, that is delta Q is now equal to a constant S into M into delta T. Understand? So, this standard equation in all the textbooks, they will write M into S into delta T. So, M as delta T, this is the standard form anyone should remember for the competitive exams as well as the board exams. M into S into delta T. Understand that? Okay. What is this constant of proportionality called by the name specific heat capacity? Understand that? Specific heat capacity of whom? of the system of the substance solid liquid or gaseous system understand now from this equation what is s equal to i will rewrite once again so s is equal to what uh, take all the terms to other terms to the left hand side now this is a uh, delta q divided by m into delta t so this is equal to delta q divided by m into delta into t understand that so this is another standard equation anyone should remember so i have got the mathematical expression for what a specific heat capacity understand that why i should call this as a specific what is specific there are you going to specify something yes i am going to specify that what happens if the mass, if mass of the substance is equal to 1 kilogram. Understand? And the rise in temperature is equal to 1 Kelvin or 1 degree Celsius also. Understand? So, 1 Kelvin and 1 Celsius are not equal always. Only rise and fall in temperature, we can take 1 Kelvin is also equal to 1 degree Celsius. Say for example, for example, T initial, T initial is equal to 27 degree Celsius. Okay, so this is in Kelvin, in Kelvin this is what, roughly 27 plus 273. So what is 27 plus 273, you take it is 300. So, 27 degree Celsius is also equal to how much? 300 Kelvin. So, what is T final? T final, for example, I will take a 28 degree Celsius. So, comparing to 27, 28 is uh, greater by how much? 1 degree Celsius only, no? We will convert this into Kelvin. So, this is 28 plus 273. This is equal to what? Uh, 301 Kelvin. So, it is very clear that 301 minus 300 is 1 Kelvin. 28 degree Celsius minus 27 degree Celsius is 1 degree Celsius. So, in this way, rise and fall in temperature can be expressed in Kelvin or degree Celsius. Okay, students. Now, what is the expression for the specific heat capacity? Once again, you tell me. Yes, it is S is equal to delta Q divided by M into delta T. Now, what are the SI units uh, of all the quantities on the right hand side? Delta Q is in Joule. M is in kilogram. 
and delta t is in kelvin understand si unit means kelvin so can you guess sir what must be the unit for the specific heat capacity so the unit for specific heat capacity unit of specific heat capacity is joule divided by so joule divided by kilogram into kelvin this is kelvin so bring this to the numerator so this is also equal to what joule per kilogram per kelvin so this is the si unit okay the si unit of a specific heat capacity of any substance is joule per kilogram per kelvin so how to understand this we have taken here 2 kilogram 20 kilogram like that is it not so very simple if you take 1 kilogram of a substance only 1 kilogram and if you want to increase its temperature from 27 degrees celsius to 28 degrees celsius by 1 degree celsius for that also some small heat is required or not though the substance is only 1 kg though the rise in temperature is only 1 degree celsius or 1 kelvin for that also we require some minimum heat so that quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of okay 1 kilogram of the substance by 1 kelvin understand so how you are going to write this definition in the exam means uh, so specific heat capacity yes it is defined as what uh, the quantity of heat understand required for what purpose the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature to raise the temperature of uh, how much substance you tell me temperature of uh, 1 kilogram of the substance only 1 kilogram that is why we specify the mass there okay of the substance by how much specifically by 1 kelvin now you read the statement once again the specific heat capacity of a substance is defined as the quantity of heat required for what purpose to raise the temperature of 1 kilogram of the substance okay there a comma by how much by 1 kelvin that is when the unit is joule per kilogram per kelvin now very very important and interesting fact i am going to tell you for solids solids they have only a yes, single value they have a single value of specific heat capacity it is fixed and uh, liquids uh, liquids also have uh, a single value understand whereas uh, gases uh, gases have uh, infinite values so gases have how many specific heat capacities infinity we cannot remember okay while solids and liquids are only one value i will tell you another very interesting fact among all the liquids the specific heat capacity of water is the highest it is 4186 joule per kilogram per kelvin understand joule per kilogram per kelvin now for solids and liquids normally we express the specific heat capacity in units of joule per kilogram per kelvin but for gases usually we don't consider one kilogram of the substance the amount of the substance si unit is what mole so for gases for gases okay exclusively for gases we consider one mole okay one mole of gas therefore the specific heat capacity is expressed in joule per mole per kelvin exclusively for gases understand now gases actually have how many specific heat capacities i told you infinite values 
Among infinite values, all are not significant. Among all the infinity number of values, only two are very significant. Those two specific capacities of gases are represented as a capital C P and capital C V. So capital C P means it is a molar specific heat capacity because for gases we are expressing the amount of the substance in mole and not in kilogram. Understand? Therefore the SI unit is what joule per mole per kilogram. When specific heat capacity is expressed in kilogram we use the symbol S, yes, small s. Yes. When the same specific heat capacity is expressed in terms of mole the symbol changes to capital C. Understand that? So, the molar specific heat capacity of gases, only two are very very important and significant. So, they are represented by the symbol Cp and Cv. Understand that? So, Cp, how to read this? It is the molar specific heat capacity of a gas at constant pressure. P for pressure. So, what next then you can guess now what should be Cv then equal to? Yes, it is the molar specific heat capacity of the gas by keeping volume as constant. There are so many interesting facts regarding Cp and Cv. So, these two are called the principal specific heat capacities of a gas. Why? Because they are very significant among all the infinite values. So, they are also called as principal specific heat capacities are molar specific heat capacities of a gas and you must also remember that Cp is always greater than Cv. This Cp is always greater than Cv and there is a relation connecting them which is called as Mayer's relation that is our next topic of discussion. I hope you must have understood very well. Once again, I am reminding you my dear students how to define specific heat capacity of any substance in general. The specific heat capacity of a substance is defined as the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 kilogram of a substance by 1 Kelvin. So, its SI unit is Joule per kilogram per Kelvin. Okay, instead of 1 kilogram, if you take 1 mole of the substance, then how will you define molar specific heat capacity? Molar specific heat capacity of any substance, particularly gases, okay, is defined as what? The quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 mole of the substance by 1 Kelvin. Also, my dear students, you remember that the rise in temperature, the rise in temperature is uh, 1 Kelvin means uh, the rise in temperature in Celsius also it is 1 only. But uh, 1 Kelvin is not equal to 1 degree Celsius, keep it in mind. I hope you must have understood well. Fine, see you.